Thank you for being with us. I appreciate it. Welcome, everybody. We're glad you're here this morning. Welcome to those of you online. I'd like to begin our service in praying for our nation after the violence at the Trump rally last night. Uh, it fit, kind of fits with uh, where I'm headed today anyways in Isaiah chapter 40. If you have your Bibles with you, Isaiah 40, because uh, Israel was in a lot of trouble and they were trying to figure out where they're going. There was a lot of fear. Um, Babylonians, Assyrians, a lot of enemies, and they didn't know where to go. They didn't know who to trust in. They didn't know what to do first. And so they sought, instead of the Lord, they sought help from other countries, other rulers, other things where you look for strength. And I'm going to ask you today to, um, to do some work, to do some hard, honest work this morning with me when we preach, when we look at this message together. Well, I guess I'll be preaching, but you'll be studying it with me. And um, what I'm asking you to do is to think about when you're in a trial or when you're in a storm or even just in your journey of faith, where do you look for strength? What's your source of strength? Where do you go to first when there's any kind of trouble or difficulty? And I want us to seek the Lord first and foremost, often seek Him first. And so when I think about, well, what do I know about politics and all that's going on in the world? I know where to go first, and that's to prayer. So, Father, we come to you and we ask that uh, you would help us to be followers of Jesus, messengers of grace and mercy as we sang, messengers of peace and love, and that we would be the people that would be guided by your Holy Spirit in whatever trial or tribulation is going on. And so we ask that you would help us to know what you need us to do. Teach us how you want us to respond. We come to you. There's a lot of fear in our individual communities, in our world, in our nation. And we don't want to be a part of that. We don't want to be a part of any kind of fear-based hatred or violence. We want the perfect love that you offer to cast out all fear and give us wisdom to speak grace and mercy and truth into whatever situation we have. We pray for the families that have been injured and, and that the one who was killed in the midst of the, the violence yesterday. We pray, God, for you to surround them and for believers to surround them. We pray for strength and comfort for those families. We pray for wisdom and calm and we pray that you would guide and lead and direct, and we pray that we, first individually, then as a church and as a people and as a nation, would seek your face and seek your strength and your guidance. And I ask this in Jesus' name, amen. And so I want you to think about uh, this seeking God first. I'm going to come at this a little bit uh, different than typically I, will, I try to give you an enabling message. Uh, you, you can do this. This is how you can do it, an equipping type of message. If you want sustaining strength from God, this is how you can gain it. That's where we've been focusing on. Today, I'm going to be a little bit more, uh, it's called obligatory. You're obliged to do this. You should do this. And people don't usually like that. They don't like messages when they're told what they should do, right? And so... That's what I'm asking you. I'm telling you that you should do this. You should seek God first. You should seek Him as your source of strength. And so you can get defensive right away and say, well, no, wait a minute. I'm not, you know, what are you, who are you to tell me what to do? I'm just the messenger telling you that this is what I've learned through the Scripture is to seek God. Seek His strength. And the work that you have to do and that I have to do is more of a, a comparative, a value. And so if you have in your mind, if this was a class and I had a whiteboard up here, I'd hear from you different things. Where do you look for strength? What, what's your source? And some of you might say finances or things like that. You might some, say uh, vitamins and healthy stuff, healthy living. And you, here's where I get my strength. Some of you might say community, family, all good things, right? But then I'd ask you to go a little bit deeper and say, but when you're in trouble, when you're hurting, when you look for something that you need, What's your first reaction? Where do you turn? Where, where's your source? And 
what, what would you say? And that's where you have to kind of get that in your head right now because you're going to compare it to the source of God's strength. I got my little recycle basket over here today to remind us so when we were young, they had a little saying, maybe they still do in college or in uh, education and in uh, school, reduce, reuse, recycle. You keep getting something renewed in you. And so where is this source that we have? All the different things in here. We got paper. We want to recycle our paper. The elders get mad at me when I make lots of copies. And they say, how many trees did you do for that one? There, you got your aluminum stuff here. I think there's, oh, there's a good one. That has water. Somebody's already drank from it, but that's okay. And so what's your source to replenish? Because a lot of the sources we look to for strength, they run out. They're actually pretty weak when we compare them to what God's Word says for us. And so I'm asking you to to get that in your head, and I'm going to compare it to the strength that God has, the strength that God provides, the strength that God promises. And His people, they were in a tough situation, and they chose not to trust in God. And yet they wondered why. And and in Isaiah 40, and then next week we'll look at a couple verses in 41. These were the most searched verses in 2023. People wanted to know, God, would you be my strength? Would you, how will you help me? Will you come alongside me? And, and his streams, his sources, they're, they're inexhaustible. They are unmatched. God gives strength to the weary. God renews the strength of those who seek him. Do you not know? Have you not heard? And so this prophet Isaiah is giving the people a comparative message. Where have you gone for your trust? Do you not know that God's strength is so much greater than any source that we would go to? Have you not heard who he is? And so what is your personal source of strength? Is it renewable? Where does it, how does it fit in? The overall theme of Isaiah 40 and 41 is about comforting people, and God is saying, I will comfort you, and it's about encouragement. I will encourage you, and it's about strength. I will strengthen you. But there's this but, or yet, you have gone to other sources for strength. You have not turned to me. You've looked somewhere else first. So God, help us to look to you first today. Help us to be honest with you and with ourselves of where we go. What do we turn to when we're weary? What or who do we look to to renew our strength and our vision and our purpose? Where do we go when we hear difficult news about our health? When we start to, when our sources start to run dry, where do we turn? And help us to return to you or turn to you first if we've never turned to you before. Open up our minds to hear and see. So the first stream of strength that I want you to see from God is that it's a strength that's totally unequaled. It's a, it's a stream that is exceeding. Now, I want to have this idea in your mind that you're, it's, it's terrible in this day because we had so many floods and everything. But So if it was a dry season, it would have been great. This would have been a great message. But now it's like, we've got enough water. Thank you very much. And so we need to figure out where's that, that source and, and is it going to continue for us? And God's source of strength, his, what God does is he brings this strength that's unequaled. It's an exceeding, the quality of the stream is exceeding more than, immeasurably more than we could ask or imagine. And so look at it with me in verses 25 through 26 to start uh, this comparison. God says through the prophet Isaiah, to whom will you compare me? And that's what I'm asking you to do today. To whom will you compare him? Put your source of strength, whatever it may be, and it may be a good and healthy thing, or it may be something that's not very healthy. Maybe some sort of addiction that is, is actually hurting you. Last week when I talked about just the aspect of Israel, and I talked about the devastation of their disobedience. Uh, what I don't want you to hear in that is if you have a sickness or you're going through a trial or whatever, that it's always about your disobedience. It's not. 
sometimes it is about our disobedience. And we need to acknowledge that. We have many enemies. They had Assyrians and Babylonians and other things. We have, the Bible talks about three major enemies we have. Satan, who wants to destroy our faith, our own sinful nature within us, and the systems of this world that are degrading and uh, they're just, they're falling apart. They don't, they don't provide what we have in the Scripture. And those, we have to determine who our enemies are, who's coming at us. And then when we see that we're in this difficult situation, we ask, where will I go? Where will I find strength today? Where will I find joy? Where will I find peace? Where will I find the, the strength to continue on, to keep going? And then compare it to God. To whom will you compare me? Who is my equal, says the Holy One? Lift your eyes and look to the heavens who created all these. He who brings out the starry host one by one and calls them each by name. Because of his great power and his mighty strength, not one of them is missing. Who do you compare him to? The Babylonians were great at astrology and looking at the stars. And, they, and we have people today who do that, right? And you look for your horoscope. You look for the stars to give you strength, to give you guidance, to give you direction. Well, on this journey that you're taking in your journey of faith, wherever God's leading you, and if you're going through a difficult time or you're going through an excellent, amazing time, God will guide you with his strength. Look to him first. Don't look to the stars, he's saying. Look to the one who created the stars. Look to the one who hangs them up. Look to the one who knows them name by name. And if God is able to hold up the stars and he knows each star's name, then he's able to know your name. And he's able to hold you up because you're so much more important to him. So much more valuable to him than any of his creation. And he is strong. And so as the Israel looked for and were defeated and discouraged, they were weak and weary. And if you're feeling that way today from any assaults of our enemies, know that those enemies and our sinfulness and the nature of this world, they sap us of our strength. And so we need, we need to, to connect with something. We need to have our, 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 where we're going to connect our, our source to, you know. This is a, a hose. Most of them kink up on me and, and then they... You don't get everything you got, but where are you connected to? I can't just go around and say, oh, man, I got an unending source of water here today. You're going to call me crazy, which you usually do anyways. But where are you connecting to? Where are you looking for your strength? And here's what I want you to think about if you're really willing to do this work about uh, comparison. Oftentimes we don't go to God when it's good, but when something hard comes and we have some sense of fear... That's when you recognize where we're looking. And when we lift our fear up to the same level as our trust in God, we put our fear equal with Him. We actually raise our fear. But if we hope in something other than God, same type of thing. We, we lift our hope up and say, well, God, you're all good and all that, but I need this, and I'm looking to this. And we raise our, our hope and our whatever we're, we're seeking, that, that source of strength, above God. And that's what the prophet is saying to the people. He looks back and he says, oh, I'll give you some things if you haven't thought about your own. In verses 18 through 20, it, he talks about idols, things that we make, things that we can produce with our own strength. He says, to whom, whom then will you compare God? What image will you compare him to? As for an idol, a craftsman casts it or a goldsmith overlays it with gold and fashions it with silver chains. It's beautiful. A man too poor to present such an offering selects wood that will not rot. He's, he looks for a skilled craftsman to set up an idol that will not topple. What idols have we made? Have we looked to what things that we create, what things that we come up with, with our knowledge, with our strength? Are we going to compare to God? Whatever we fear, whatever we put our hope in as a source of strength, we make that equal to God, and that's idolatry. We raise it above Him. In verses 21 through 22, he says that God not is not greater than all the idols. I think most of us would agree with that, but we don't, maybe don't recognize our own idols. He says, God exceeds all of creation, no matter what is in creation. Do you not know? Have you not heard? Verse 21, 
Has it not been told to you from the very beginning? Have you not understood since the earth was founded? He sits enthroned above the creation. He sits enthroned and above the circle of the earth. And its people, they're like grasshoppers. He stretches out the heavens like a canopy. He shreds them out like a tent to live in. He's over all creation. So why would we worship created things when we can worship the creator? Why would we look to created things to give us strength when we have a creator? And some of those things are good. It's good to have water. It's supposed to be very hot and humid today. Stay hydrated. God is the creator of that. You look to God as the creator and he would tell you, you need to drink more. You need to eat less chocolate, Pastor Scott. You need to not, you know, I'm going to be really dehydrated. I better drink a lot, so I'll drink a lot of coffee today. Yeah. And so he hits me upside the head sometimes and reminds me that these are not the sources. But he's still the creator, and he will guide us. We need to ask him, how many times have you prayed, God, I need this, God, I need that? I have. What if we prayed instead, God, what do I need today? What do, you, what do you think I need, God? What do you think our nation needs, God? What do you think our family needs, God? What do you say, God, that we need? See, that's going to him first. And he might give you, tell you, direct you to a, a resource. He will never run out. He will never run dry. He surpasses all the idols. He surpasses all things in creation. He's greater. Seek him first. Seek him foremost. And then he looks at rulers, verse 23 and 24. He brings princes to naught. He reduces the rulers of this world to nothing. No sooner are they planted, no sooner are they sown, no sooner do they take root in the ground, and then he blows on them and they wither. And the whirlwind sweeps them away like chaff. Don't trust Israel. Don't trust in Egypt. Don't trust in Assyrians. Don't trust in, don't trust. The psalmist says, there are them who, some who trust in horses. They're strong. Some who trust in chariots. But we trust in the name of the Lord our God, Psalm 20, verse 7. So where's your trust? Is it in idols, things that you craft? Is it in some aspect of creation? Is it in some ruler, some politician, some form of democracy that you think you can come? Or will you turn to the creator and look to him who is over and greater of all the rulers and greater than all things in creation and all idols? A horse is a vain hope for deliverance. A horse is a, despite all its great strength, the psalmist says in Psalm 3, despite all its great strength, it's a vain hope. And so there's the blank. That blank was supposed to kind of come down on the last sentence there. And that's where I want you to do the work. What have you thought about? What's your source of strength? Even a good thing. It's a vain hope for deliverance when compared to God. So why are you putting all of your hope in that or in them instead of in God. God's people don't look to creation of the stars for help. We look to the creator, the one who holds them in his strong and mighty, his unequaled strength, exceeding strength, the one who knows their names. To whom will you compare him? To whom will you compare his strength? What will you make equal to God? That's why God's anger comes out in these passages. Israel, you were my people, my chosen, you're my nation, and and I provided for you and I protected you, and you exchanged your glory, your glory. What was their glory? That they had a relationship with God. It was God's glory that they were connected to, and their glory, he says, you exchanged your glory, that you had a God who was mighty with you, who was present with you, who provided for you, who would be there, who knows your name, and you exchanged it. I know. The second stream we see in this passage is a stream of just the everlasting from beginning to end. The Lord is everlasting. Verse 27. Why do you say, O Jacob, O complain, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord. My cause is disregarded by God. Have you ever prayed that? God, I'm so tired of this. I've been praying about this, praying about this. Do you not hear me? Are you disregarding my cause? Why do you complain? Why don't you just bring it to him? Your way is not hidden from the Lord. 
Your cause is not disregarded by God. Do you not know? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God. He's the creator. He's the ends of the earth. He's the beginning. He's the end. He doesn't grow tired or weary. His understanding, no one can fathom. He is, so why this appearance that we have that God's disregarded us or disregarded our situation or is indifferent to it. And people say, well, that's just for Israel. This, this passage is for God's people back then. Listen to me. Everything that is true about God right here in the prophet Isaiah has been true about him in Genesis and before. And everything that's true about him in saying who he is in Isaiah is true about who he is in the Gospels. It's true about who he is in Revelation and beyond because he is everlasting to everlasting. You're going to go on a journey. You're going to go through a difficult time. Then you want a guide who's going to walk with you, who knows where to start. He knows where you started, and he knows where it's going to finish. He's the everlasting. He's from the beginning to the end. Don't you want a guide? Don't you want a source of strength that knows the whole picture instead of just part of it? Well, seek him. He knows it. He knows where you've been. He knows where you're headed, and he has a plan for your life, but stay walking with him. Stay connected with him. These things are true about God. Yes, it's true about the context, but it's true about who God is. What is true about God is what we need to say. What is, we need to be reminded of that because enemies come and say, your God has disregarded you. Your prayers are left unanswered, and they will attack and attack you. And you say, well, what is true? What do I know for certain? Well, here's what you can know for certain. God is everlasting. He's eternal. He had no beginning. He has no end. He knows it all from the very beginning. He's the creator. He reminds us again. He's sovereign and over all his creation. And so he can create, and he can create a new situation for you, and he can restore, and he can sustain. That's who he is. That's who he is, and he doesn't change. And so what's true for them is true for us because we trust in God. He's unceasing. He doesn't faint. He doesn't give up. He doesn't grow weary. He's unsearchable. No one can fathom his wisdom. We we studied Romans. Remember Romans? And and Paul says, oh, the depths of his riches. Oh, the depths of his wisdom. The depth of his knowledge. How unsearchable is his judgment. His paths go beyond tracing out. We can't fathom him all that he is. But he'll give us understanding that he has. So our sources of strength outside of God, they, they run up. They run out. If I can do vitamins, i got to order some more. This doesn't, I'm going to finish this, and then we'll recycle it. When we did trips to, to, to do wells in Guatemala and, and Honduras, it was such a reward, and you work hard, and you get to know the people, and you meet the people in the village and everything like that, and you're pounding, and you're helping with that drill, and you're going, going. oh, we hit rock at this feet, and we got to get to this depth, and we got to get, and finally at the end, you get through, and now outside this pipe comes this clear, cold, fresh water just pouring through. And you know why you rejoice? Because you just saw a bunch of people that brought their children down to a dirty river to get bathe them in them and to get the same thing that they're bathing in to drink. And you saw how dirty and un, how, how decaying and how deteriorating that source of water was there that they were doing everything they could. And now this whole area has fresh, clean water because they dug a well that came up from the source of creation. It was so rewarding because you saw the source come through. And we had to ask ourselves, what are we changing? What are we exchanging this, these unchanging attributes of God we find comfort in them. We find strength in them. We, we can trust them because of this quality of his wisdom, of his knowledge. I told you last week that Julie and I had a chance to enjoy some vacation time up north, have a family cabin there that's just really basic and simple, just a summer cabin. You know, it really doesn't take much maintenance, some work. I got to put the dock in, take it out, whatever. And maybe Jason will help me sometime with it. I don't know. And... Uh, <laughs> And so, you know, we just kind of, you just do it and you mow the weeds. It's not, there's no lawn. There's no fertilizer. You just, you just live. It's just great. It's simple. But then we have this boat, this speedboat, 1996. And pretty much every year you can count on something's going to go wrong. And being the mechanic that I am, <laughs> I looked at it and I said, yeah, it's a problem. But we're blessed because two doors down, we have a neighbor's name is Kevin. 
and he's a man of integrity, and he has a small engine and marine repair place. He knows boats and motors and engines from beginning to end. And so I call him, I say, hey, Kevin, you know, I, I, I got a problem. Here's what, and I explain it all very technical like that. And, uh, and he says, okay, listen, Scott, just uh, what I want you to do is disconnect the battery, charge it up fully, and then reconnect it. I'm like, yes, thank you. I can do that. I know I can do that. So I do that, didn't solve it. So I told him what was happening and what happened. And he says, okay, now listen. Because he's trying to save me money. He's a person of integrity. Some mechanics, what would they do? Bring it over. I'll fix it. And they'll over fix it and overcharge me. But not Kevin. He's a man of integrity. So he wants to walk me through it. And so he says, listen, uh, take off the cover, do it, get it. And then take off this and something else. I didn't know what it was called. And then he says, take the spark plugs out and make sure that you... uh, Pay attention to the, what are they called, Brandon, the things that go on the spark plugs, the wire things? Re, re, yeah, those cable type things. He had a name for them, and I, I, I'm, not just, I'm on the phone, and I'm nodding like I know what I'm talking about. And so then he says, then, and then just turn it, turn it, so that if you see water coming out where the spark plugs were, and then he tells me, and, and I've already glazed over. And if you're not laughing hysterically right now, then either you don't know me very well, or you're just full of mercy and grace, and I thank you for that. And so I get off the phone with all these things, what I'm supposed to do, and I, and I go to another source that seems to be unending. It's not quite everlasting, but it seems to be unending. You know, it's not TikTok, but it's YouTube. It seems to be unending, and, and so, because I don't even know where the spark plugs are. I said to Kevin, I go, uh, Kevin, uh, well, yeah, so you got to take, take them all out? He goes, yeah. I go, how many are there? <laughs> Very condescending, but generous. It's a six-cylinder, Scott, so there are six spark plugs. Yeah, 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 got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. No way. And what did I want Kevin to do? I want Kevin to just say, I got you. I'll, I'll, I'll take it, I'll come over, and I'll just do it for you. And that's what we ask from God sometimes. God, would you just do it? But God wants to teach us something in this. That's the point. Kevin wanted to mentor me. He didn't realize the cause that he had before him. He wanted me to learn something and to try and to grow. And that's what God does sometimes. We want that answer right now. We want to hear, and we don't realize that he's from everlasting to everlasting, and he's saying, I want to walk you with you this. I want to walk you through this. I want to, I want to, I'm going to talk to you as we go through this. I'm going to stay with you. I'm not going to leave you. I'm going to walk through this thing with you, and you're going to learn something, and you're going to grow. What do you want me to know, God? What do you want me to to learn right now in this situation? What do you want your people here to know about who you are? What do you want them to do, God? We need you. We look to you. You're our strength. You're our wisdom. What do you want us to know today, God? What do you think we need in this current situation. And what do you want me to do? The last source of strength is that he doesn't ever give up on us. It's enduring. Don't you want a guide who, who doesn't throw, <laughs> throw it all away and say, ah, you're a helpless cause. If I'm a helpless cause as a boat mechanic, which I am, by the way, it's over parked in Kevin's driveway right now. <laughs> And I got one cord off one spark plug. One cord off of one spark plug. I didn't have the right tools and equipment to even get the spark plug off once I figured out where they were. I got bloody knuckles and and everything else from it, but I didn't really learn much except where they are and that I need somebody who's greater than me. And it's a lesson God keeps trying to teach me time and time again. Do you not know, have you not heard, the Lord is everlasting. He doesn't grow tired or weary. He gives strength to the weary. He increases the power of the weak. Even youths grow tired and weary. Young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, those who wait in the Lord, they renew their strength. Their strength will be renewed, and they'll soar on wings like eagles. They'll run. They'll not grow weary. They'll walk. They'll not faint. Where are you at in your journey? Are you walking? If you walk with God, you won't faint. 
you know, keep going. Fainting is a terrible thing, isn't it? How many people have fainted? Now you don't want to say it. That's all right. It's embarrassing. We came back from up north, and we went into Culver's, and we're going quick into the bathroom, but Julie was good that she's not as bad of a bladder and everything that I am. I will barrel through, and she went in slowly, and there was a woman on the floor. If she would have gone in quickly like I had, it would have got bonged right in the head. And she was passed out on the floor. And she's like, oh, no, can I, can I help you? Can I help you? And the woman, oh, thank you for waking me up. On the floor in a culver's bathroom. She was diabetic. And she just sat right down there on the floor and passed out because she of her sugar, whatever that is. No strength. God's promise to you. His promise to you, no matter how weary you are right now, no matter what you're going through, if you can only just walk, you will not faint if you go with Him, if you trust in His strength. And some of you are running a great race. You're running a great race in, in Australia. It's a great race. Keep running it. Keep running that race. And you won't grow weary if you trust in the Lord when you're running your race. And then those of some of you are just mounting up. It's not, it's not what people thought. Some people thought, well, it's eagles. They renew their, their feathers and things like that. that. That's not it in this one here. It's like you're mounting, you're climbing, you're getting up to the heights, and, and you're going further. You're moving like you have wings. You're moving on that mountain hike like you have wings, like you have a, uh, the strength of an eagle. And that's who God is. Wherever you're at in your journey, he gives strength to the weary. See the promise? He increases the power of the weak. It's an awesome promise that only God can do. God does this. If you're weary, he'll give you strength. If you need more power, you're weak, he'll increase your power. If you're worn out, he'll renew your strength. And so him, the exhausted and the fatigued, can actually still walk. You may not be able to run right now in your situation, but you can walk. You may run, but you're not getting high. And I don't know what you have to tell now. I just blew it. You're not climbing the mountain to the highest peak. Last battle in Chronicles of Narnia, Narnia, further up, further in, further up, further in. There's two words here I want to end with, and the worship team is going to give us a song about connecting with Christ. The two words are the application for us to call to action. The NIV says hope. The ESV and King James, I think, say wait on the Lord. And the reason NIV changes wait to hope is because it's a different type of wait than other songs when we've talked about just waiting and being still. We talked about that last week, wait and be still. This word for wait actually means to twist or to wind like a rope. I don't know what this rope is, how, how many threads are in it. It's braided and things like that. But this one here I know has three strands. And Ecclesiastes says one can be overcome, two or better, but a cord of three, not easily broken. This is what that word wait or hope means, that I'm twined up in God. I am wrapped up in His strength, and wherever this one goes, this one goes with it. And so put your hope, put your trust, wound up in Christ, in Christ. That's what it looks like, and then you will be strong, and then you will the Broadman Bible commentary says it's a cord of escape. So wait on Him. Put your hope in Him. Get wound up in Him. And then the second word is renew. They all renew their strength. And what that word literally means is they'll exchange it. Exchange. That what you were trusting in before, it was depleting. Has a nation ever changed its gods? The prophet Jeremiah said. Yet they're not gods at all. But my people, they've exchanged their glory. They exchanged their glory for worthless idols. They Listen now. They have forsaken me, the spring of living water, and they dug their own cisterns that are broken cisterns that can't hold water. Exchange your source of strength today. Christ alone. Christ be our strength. Christ be our hope. Christ be our peace. In Christ alone is our strength. Not I, but Christ.